Hey everyone, and welcome back to my fancy library. Let's take a quick look at how to grade exams on Gradescope. So here I am, logged into Gradescope. Now, let's begin. I'm going to go into my course, and this can be 2A or 2C, but in this case, I've made a test course, so let's go into 2A. Now you see here, this is, what the, this is also what the students will see. We have multiple choice and free response. So the multiple choice for the students is relatively easy. The students just need to choose the, the option that they think is correct that, um, from the options that are available. Just like your classical multiple choice. Now here in free response, we're actually going to have to assign rubric items uh, based, off student, uh, based off student answers. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. Now I've just programmed a few. There could be multiple different types of questions. It could be short answer, it could be long answer. Here we've got a couple of long answer style questions that we're going to answer. I've got some rubrics set up. So let's take a look at how to grade them. So once you get into Gradescope and you've like clicked on the assignment, if you're worried about where to go or how to get there, it's not, as far as grading goes, you click on grade submissions. It's going to take you to the screen where you see the different problems broken down. If you have more problems, you'll see more problems. And then you can click on the problem and it'll take you right into there and you can grade. You can also click on submissions right next to it. And say you're, say you're assigned, say you have 300 students in your class and you're assigned students 200 through 299. You will need to make use of the submission button right here. Click on it and it takes you to the different submissions. Now imagine that you have a list of 300 here. You could, go, you could go right to 200, click on it, and start grading, okay? I just wanted to show you that because we're going to have some TAs that start at number one, some TAs are going to start at say 100, some TAs are going to start at 200, right? It depends on how many exams we have and how many TAs we have to split the exams um, amongst. So once you click on grade submissions, you're going to see the different questions that you can grade. Now let's do try 17. So since I clicked on 17, it's taking me right into the first submission. And I can do that right down here, submission one of two. If you have 300, it will be one of 300. So here's the student's answer. And they had to assign this to the problem uh, when they uploaded their exam. So now as a TA, I'm going to look at the right side here. This is our rubric. At the top, the 10 points is the total of this question, the total points of this question. You can check out rubric settings if that's relevant for you here. Otherwise, in most cases, you'll see the, the point total, and then you'll see the different rubric items. You can select these rubric items and add those amount, amounts of points. If, if the student uh, answer warrants them. So here, and this is totally up to you, uh, how you set the rubric. This is just one way to do it. And especially for a video, I just make an example. So for, for this problem here for number 17, where we need to balance this reaction, we just see the student, student answer here. They get plus two for correct uh, oxidation half reaction. And do they have it here? Uh, it looks like AL0, uh, oxidation number zero is going to three. So yes. And let's see, correct ox reduction, probably if they got the oxidation right, especially, but particularly in this case, it was correct. Now, uh, correct amount of electrons to balance, yeah. Correct to balance electrons by finding lowest co common multiple. Well, in this case, it was three over here on the right. And in the reduction reaction, it was three on the left. So they were kind of just multiplied by one. So technically they did it and we'll give them credit. And then last, correctly balance electrons by finding lowest common multiple. And uh, yeah, I just mentioned that. Correctly added half the options and canceled common terms. Essentially with this bal balanced reaction and you see the cross out there, they cross out the electrons. So in this case, the person got full, point, full credit for the, for the question. If they miss anything that's kind of sketchy, you can go ahead and add, add comments. 
Uh, what I like to say is sometimes a good comment, if you had to take away points, especially if you think it might be contested later, a good comment will save a regrade request later. So now let's go to number 18 in this case. And you see we have a molarity concentration, uh, concentration question. And here we're just trying to find the concentration of 0.5 liters of 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. Okay, relatively simple question. But nonetheless, this is useful for grading purposes. So if they, in this case, and you can, again, set up the rubric however you want. In this case, they got plus two points for correct moles. And if they set it up right, it, it 40 grams moles over 40 gram per mole, they got, they got that correct. Even if they don't explicitly write it out, if they at least show it, especially with the, the numbers in place of variables, we can give them credit for that, uh, um, especially if they have subsequent correct answers. So let's go through number 18. As you can see, it's a total of eight points. So now let's just check the rubric items that they got correct. So they get that super correct setup to obtain moles in NaOH. And right here you see it, uh, grams over molar mass, and they got plus two correct moles in NaOH. Let's see if they got that. 25 liters of 40 grams. Yeah, I and they did. If they show the work, even if they don't explicitly state the number sometimes, it's okay to give them the credit. Especially if they have sub subsequent right answers and work. So, plus two correct setup to obtain molarity for NaOH. Yes, they did. And then correct answer two moles, two molar. That should be two molar. And this is great because we can show you how to change it here. So, two moles is described, just describes some two moles floating around any amount of solution. But here it should be two molar. And you see how I fixed that? I just clicked in here. And deleted and added text. Last correct sig, sig figs for answer. And I say here it should have one. Um, you can treat this how you want. You can get full credit for everything else and just take off one point for minus, uh, minus one point for wrong sig figs. That's up to you. And of course, make sure you leave a rubric item for TAs for no work, uh, no work shown or no correct work. One thing I would like to show before we before we uh, cut this off is I would like to show the hotkeys for grade scope. So here's some of the hotkeys for grade scope, and this will help you like get through your uh, questions a lot quicker, especially if you have like 80, 50. This will help you out a lot. So just take note. You can also just Google grade scope hotkeys and find the similar information or grade scope shortcut keys. And you'll see that you can just use the keyboard for a lot of this and you don't have to use the mouse to constantly click. Um, you don't have to click the mouse to click rubric items. You can just use the numbers here and you can use the arrows to navigate it. And you can use different letters here to navigate uh, through your grading, okay? And, if you need, and you can always look up more of these um, shortcut keys if needed.